Welcome, everybody. Hello, welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, gather on in, and if you want to tell us where you're from, we would love to know where you're watching us from. You can type your location in the chat. I'm Amy Karanik, and I'm a Sculpey brand ambassador, and I'm in the Sculpey studio today to bring you this creative classroom with Michaels and with Sculpey Oven Baked Clays. And I'm very excited about what we're going to learn today. I'm going to show you real quickly what we're making. We're, it's all about upcycling today. So we're making stuff out of stuff that you already have. This is a little old cardboard coffee can that we are making a planter out of. So all about upcycling, reusing, um, turning old things new again. This is, let me show you, it's a little Altoids tin. And I covered the top of it with Sculpey Oven Bay Clay and just to make a little organizer or a little um, box to store business cards or paper clips, whatnot in that. All of these projects are gonna be made from the same bars of clay, so they're all gonna match. This is the cute little yogurt jar that we've, we're making a lid for. And um, also we're gonna put like a little crystal or some sort of memorabilia up here for the handle. I don't have this one glued in because I wanna show you how to glue it in, but I do have it perched there and that's a little crystal. So that will, um, that will be the handle. So, okay, those are the three items that we're making. And we're making all three of these out of Sculpey 3. And this is what it looks like in the package. Um, we're using a couple glitter colors. We're using the glitter pink and the glitter black. This is teal, pearl, and white. And so by using all the same colors for each project, um, they're all going to look good together. And also, I'm proud to say that you can make all three projects out of only one bar of each color. So Chanel, if you're ready, we could go overhead so that everyone can see what we're doing. All right, first let's talk about preparing our items for upcycle. So as I mentioned in the intro, this is a little coffee can and um, it's cardboard with those metal rims. And I think it looks very nice um, because uh, I do like those metal rims. I think it gives it a nice finished look. And also what I did was I peeled the whole label off and um, do I look real choppy to you guys or <laughs> the, I'm getting a lot of like lag time on, on the image I'm seeing there. So I peeled the whole coffee label off and then I painted it with acrylic paint. And what I did was just pick out an acrylic paint that looks like really nice with my clay colors. And so I chose, um, this is actually called desert turquoise acrylic paint. This is a flat acrylic paint. You can also use glossy. So I just pre-painted my can with at least two coats of that acrylic paint and let it dry completely before going forward. Um, that's a lot better, Jen. I don't know what you did, I, but I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. I feel like it's not as, as yeah. choppy. See All right. <laughs> then another prep work I did was on this little Altoids can. Obviously, I uh, took all the mints out because this is going to go right in the oven. All these pieces that we're decorating with oven baked clay are going to go right in the oven. And so interestingly enough, like cardboard, paper, all that can go right in the oven because we bake our clay at only 275 and paper doesn't burn until like 411. So you can totally upcycle, you know, glass, metal, paper, cardboard, because it won't burn in your home oven. So this is a little mint tin. And what I did with it was I painted the top of it. Again, I picked a coordinating color of paint because I thought it looked pretty good match for my pink glitter. This time I used acrylic glossy paint and I like either a flat or a glossy. I kind of prefer the glossy um, because glossy has like a little bit more of a grip to it between the metal and the clay. Um, so I used glossy on this one. I painted the whole top of the Altoids tin and then let that dry completely. Now, um, one reason I like this style box is because it has such a neutral color on the bottom of the box. I don't even bother with covering that up. I just painted over just all that, you know, red part on the top because red didn't really look good with my project. So paint the top of your can and then set that aside. 
Now for the little yogurt jar, um, I'll show you what that looked like empty. This, this is just a cute, cute little glass jar. Um, and these come in different shapes. Here's another style of yogurt jar that comes in a glass jar. And I think these are just such cute little jars. And I like this one that I used because it doesn't even have any threads at the top. It's just like a, a simple, um, has a nice glass rim. Uh, if you have trouble finding these, you could also use baby food jars. They're, they are a very good size. So the only prep done on this was just to make sure it was clean and dry. Okay, so let's get started. The first one I'm going to show you how to make is this lid. And the technique that I used on this lid is called Mokume Gane. Now, I did this lid three times because um, we went back and forth with like how the rim should look. I used the same colors and the same amounts of each clay, but you can see how differently they turned out. So bear with me, it may not be exactly the same, but um, it's gonna be good and you're gonna like it. <laughs> okay, so first thing I did, like I mentioned before, these are the colors I'm using. This is Sculpey 3 and each of these bars is two ounces. You totally have enough clay to get all three projects done. And so first thing for the little jar lid, um, I just broke, when you open up your Sculpey 3, you'll see that it comes, it has a fourth section right here. I just broke off one of the sections and then I rolled it out flat with this acrylic roller. And I have one fourth of a bar of each color. Now, what we wanna do is stack these up for Mokume Gane and, um, I'm trying to remember the order that I put these in because it kind of makes it look um, different each time you do it. So roll these out thin. These are about one eighth of an inch thick and then pile them up like so. Put one on top of the other and then just give this a little flattening with your, with your roller. Just pushing out air bubbles. Now Sculpey 3, like all oven baked polymers, um, they need to be conditioned and you can condition them by rolling them. Now, the first thing, or you can do it by hand conditioning. So this is a lot of extra clay. So I'm just going to get rid of some of this so that um, it's a little bit easier. I'm just going to trim some of these scraps away and save those because we're going to, we can use those later. You just need equal amounts of each color. And so there, I know I have an equal amount of each color. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll over this with some hand pressure to um, flatten it even thinner. And as it flattens, you'll notice that your sheet is actually getting bigger and longer. And so I want to flatten both sides till it's about double what it was in length, okay? Now, um, I didn't mention this earlier, but I always put my darkest color on top because the darkest color is what's gonna carry through the details in your finished pattern. Like here, you can really see that dark color coming through in these little nodes. Also, like in this one, you can see the, the dark black color coming through in these lines. So I always put my darkest color on top. You can experiment with this and do it however you like, but that's just the method I like to use. Now I just slice that in half with my um, clay blade and then I'm gonna pile these back up and I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. I'm gonna roll over these to make sure there's no air trapped between the layers and also to make it longer and thinner one more time. So I'm gonna go for about double what it was And sometimes when it gets kind of wonky in shape, I'll go ahead and pull like pull on the corners just to make sure they're stretching evenly, okay? Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. I'm gonna cut this in half and repile it one more time. This is called Mokume Gane. And Mokume Gane is words that mean uh, wood grain metal. It's kind of a Japanese um, technique that we've adopted to oven bake clay. And you can see now that I started out with one sheet of each color, and now I have basically um, four layers of each color in these very thin sheets. So what that did was it really thinned the layers, made them really skinny stripes, 
and it's going to give us like a cool pattern. All right, now what I want to do is I want to just burnish this down to my work surface, but I also want to make sure I've got like enough to make a lid for my jar. Let me get an empty jar. So I'm just balancing this on top of my lid, just to on top of my jar, just to make sure I have enough for a lid. Let me just roll this a little flatter because I want just a little more volume of clay. And that, that looks really good. It looks like it will, you know, more than cover the lid. Okay. Now this time I'm going to use my roller one more time and I'm going to burnish this down to my work surface. And I have like a silicone um, crafting mat here in front of me. And this clay likes to stick to slick uh, a silicone surface like this. In my home studio, I have Formica countertops. The clay likes to stick to Formica. If you just burnish it down with a roller or with hand pressure, it kind of stays in one place. And that's a good tip um, for working with making our pattern in the clay layers. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is take um, the blade that I was using before is kind of flexible. And so now I want to switch to kind of a rigid blade. And I have this really short one that's very um, stiff. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to cut through my pattern, making like kind of a um, north, south, east, west. And see how this one pulled up? I just want to re push that back down and then seat it down to my work surface again. And then I'm going to go at angles, corner to corner. And I'm actually, uh, I'm applying a lot of pressure and I'm actually pushing all the way through my sheet. Okay, so now I've created, um, you can't see that very well, but it's like an asterisk, like a star shape um, all the way through. And I wonder if we can zoom a little bit, Jen, so they can see that a little bit better. Maybe just a bit. There you go. Oh, okay. I think you can see my lines I made now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next, uh, all the designs I'm going to make in here are going to be done with the five and one. And the five and one is this handle with a magnetic tip. And then any of these little tools can fit um, on the inside. And so I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna put my needle tool in first and it, you hear how it just like snaps right in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around like this and I'm just gonna make some impressions kind of between those major triangles of the asterisk. And I'm gonna get my extra clay out of the way. Okay, and I'm, I'm not going all the way through the slab this time. I'm just making like an indent like that, okay? Next, I'm going to take the ball ended tool and carefully take the needle out, stand it back up here in this little holder. I'm gonna put the ball ended tool in and I am going to put a divot on the end of each of these little score marks that I just made. When I get this all done, I'll raise it up so you can see it better in the camera. And then I'm also gonna go further out from those and put um, a ball ended shape out here, further out away from those, okay? And then I'm going to take this chisel tool, which is this flat piece, and I'm gonna put that in there. And I'm gonna go in here and just put a hash mark on each of these ones that I first did with the needle tool. And then I'm gonna put one on closer to the ball ended one. So basically what we're doing is we're just making impressions in the clay that go into the layers of all those stripes. And what we're doing is we're pushing the um, this dark color down through those other stripes. And I see one here that I missed. So I'm just gonna put the ball back on and correct that. 
All right, I'm gonna to try to pick this up so that you can see my pattern better. Okay, and maybe if I hold it at angles, you can see all those details. And I made all those details just impressing into that dark clay. Can you see that, Jen? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, now what I wanna do is I'm gonna put this back down on my work surface and we're gonna slice through that with this flexible blade. But before we do that, we want to um, we want to heal some of those cuts up that we made so that the whole slab sticks together better. So I'm just taking my roller and I'm just gently rolling over this. And actually some of those little lines are kind of healing and disappearing. Now I can still see like the top bit of these ball marks that I made. I can still see those, those are quite evident. It's just some of the finer lines that I made. Um, like for example, the lines I made with this tip, they're almost gone. They're almost healed up completely. I would pick it up and show it to you, but at this point, it's kind of important that it stays down because next we're gonna slice through this. And I like to use um, the flexible blade. This blade is real flexy and I'm gonna start by cleaning it with this wipe. This is just a baby wipe and baby wipes are great for cleaning your hands, cleaning clay off your work surfaces and keeping your tools clean. I'm going to slice through this um, this way. It might seem counterintuitive. It might seem more easy to slice this way, but we don't want to do that. We want to slice this black layer off so that we can see the, all the, the um, detail lines that we made down through the clay. So I'm going to start, and that's why I want this step down because I as I slice, I want it to stay in place. So I'm gonna start up here in a corner and I'm bending the blade slightly so that just the middle of the blade is touching the clay. And you can kind of see that very thin layer of clay that's being removed. It's so thin, you can see it coming up over the top of my blade. And if I flip this over, this piece that was removed, it has this beautiful intricate pattern in it and the colors you can see there. And those can be saved and used, you know, for designs in other projects if you would like. So what you wanna do now is just keep this blade clean and then we're just gonna keep slicing. You're basically slicing this top black layer off. And what's revealed is that beautiful pattern that we made when we um, scored down through all the layers of clay with all of our tools. And this is something that you might wanna experiment with, like the more layers of colors you create, the more busy your pattern will look. So it's something that you kinda of wanna get the, the feel of, like I was trying to make, keep this pattern more, um, not so busy so that you could see all my, all the lines. Here's another thing to notice. Look how much brighter this pink is than that pink down there. And that's just because of the direction that you're looking at it. Um, in this case, I'm looking at the bright pink with the white background. And in this case, I'm looking at the bright pink with the blue background. And so it really changes the color effect, the direction that you slice and the way that you layer up the colors. All right, and we need almost this whole area to make our lid. So I'm just gonna keep slicing even all the way out to the extremities. I'm gonna slice out here. So I have plenty of uh, landscape here to create my lid. Just keep removing. Now, another thing that influences the look of it is like right here, I sliced a lot deeper than I did in the rest. And so I went through more of those color layers. And um, that really doesn't bother me because the whole thing has sort of an organic feel to it where it's not, everything's not equal. But if you want more colors to be revealed, then you can just go back over and slice a little deeper. And where I'm slicing right here, I'm bringing out more of that blue, more of the pink and more of the blue because those are deeper layers. And so if I slice down a little deeper, I'll get more of those. 
So you can do this as much or as little as you like. And you can see again that um, each time I do it, I'm using the same colors and I'm, I think I'm stacking them pretty much in the same order, but it always is going to give you just a little bit different feel. Okay, and that, that slice brought me a lot more blue in the middle. So, okay, I think you get the idea. Now I'm just going to get some of this out of my way because I don't want to end up wearing it. But like I said, if you could offload those into somewhere and keep them, they would make beautiful uh, veneers for like a pair of earrings or some something like that because it's really pretty and it just doesn't go to waste. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my jar to map out um, how big of a lid I want and line this up on here. And I do want my lid to be um, just a little bit bigger than the rim of my glass jar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my, uh, my, my craft cutting blade in my five and one tool like that. And I'm gonna go around the outside of that just tracing around the outside of the jar lid. And I'm going about more than an eighth uh, bigger than the outside of the jar because we're gonna turn our little lid into kind of a dome like this. And that takes like extra, extra stuff, okay? Okay, so there's my decorative lid part that I wanna save that for the lid. And then what I wanna do next is just make, um, so I have this black disc on the bottom, but under between the black disc and the dome, I have some filler in there. And that's what I'm using all this scrap clay for. So let's just bundle up our scrap clay and make sort of a little dome uh, for the top of the lid. So I'm just conditioning this in my hands. This isn't going to show, so it doesn't really matter if it's a pattern or, or what it is. And I'm just going to roll this up into a ball. And then I'll flatten this down. Use my roller again. And we're just making like a thick pancake of clay with this. And I want my thick pancake. So this is about... Um, this is at least a quarter of an inch thick. And as you saw, it was all that scraps that I had set aside from, I started out with one quarter bar of each of my colors and I made that um, sheet. So this is all the extra scraps. And I just wanna go in here and I wanna make sure that this will sit. I want it to sit inside this area of the jar because what that does, or I want it to, I want it to actually sit right on top and then we'll make this disc that keeps it from sliding off the jar. Okay, so I want it to be about the size of the outer rim. And so that looks really good. I think I can flatten it a little more. And then we can trim the excess with our blade again. Okay, so I'll just put that on there. I still have my uh, blade in my knife tool and I'm just gonna remove anything that's sticking out. Okay, now I'm going to kind of push the edges up so it makes like a little, like a little bevel, because remember how we want to make that like a nice little domed lid. So I want to get like a nice edge here for that. Jen, do we have any questions coming up as, as I'm working here? Yeah. Anything I need to address? Okay, well, if you Not guys, yet. if you guys have questions, just put them in the chat and we will answer them as we go, because I want you to succeed with this project. I want it to be fun and easy to do. So if you have questions, I wanna answer those. All right, so all I did there was, I was just making sure that the thickness of this is really um, consistent. And what I wanna do, let me show you how, what I wanna do from the bottom. It might be easier to see from the bottom. So I'm gonna take my pretty side and flip it upside down, and then I'm gonna put this right in the middle. 
Okay. Now I want to clean my area because remember, this is my pretty side here and I don't want to get it messed Maybe up. We do now have a question. Oh, cool. <laughs> How do you remove fingerprints from the clay? Okay. So um, if you want to remove fingerprints, uh, you can buff those out with one way to do it is like, let's say I had a big fingerprint right here. You can, you can actually buff away your fingerprints with your finger. Now, in this case, you don't want to do it you know, too much because you don't want to smear your beautiful design that you've made. But I find that like if you had a, you know, a solid area that you wanted to buff out a fingerprint, your own finger in a swirling motion will make a really nice way. Or you could fold up a paper towel into a little pad and douse it with just a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And then you can wipe away fingerprints like that. So now I'm just bending my lid edge over um, the edge of my filler like so. And I wanna make sure it made good connection here in the middle where it's flat. Okay, now I'm just gonna lift this to double check that my lid is gonna still be an appropriate size for my jar. And I think that looks really good, especially since um, my other samples here, I actually made a ropey finish. That's a twisted rope finish. This one has more of a, a marbled edge finish. That one was, that was the one Jen liked. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And so I'm just making sure that this top edge is seated down, you know, over the filler edge, like so. And then I'm just gonna gently pull it off, okay? Okay, now I want my jar to have this, this, uh, this big extra piece here because I like the idea of it not sliding off. So the way that we did that was just to take some extra of the, of the black glitter, just take like a that much and we'll just roll it down flat. I'm rolling this with my acrylic roller just to get it going, kind of flatten it out because that makes it easier to handle. Now I'm conditioning it by hand. And what we will do is just make a little patty of clay that will exactly fit inside uh, the rim. This time we totally want it to be on the inside. So let me roll this back out flat again. And when you're working with oven baked clays, you just want them to be malleable and really smooth and consistency. And we call that conditioning. So I've shown you how I do that with my hands and how I do it with the roller. Like if, if at this point while I'm rolling it, if I noticed air bubbles, or anything like that, any inconsistencies, I would pop the air bubbles with my needle tool, you know, something like that. Now I'm just gonna use my jar to make sure that piece will fit inside there and it will. And then I'm gonna put this right in the middle of the bottom. And I'm gently tapping these together because you don't need adhesive or anything between layers of oven baked clay. You just need some hand pressure and I'm even gonna kind of press it down from this way, just to make sure that those are connected together. And then those will permanently bond in the oven, okay? So there's your little uh, ram holder that will keep it from sliding off. All right, to put on here um, a, little, a little like rope rim, just to make it look finished, let me show you how to do that. We could use some of this scrap clay that I just cut away but that's not gonna be quite enough. So I'm just gonna take some pieces of each color from the bars. And I'm just taking small amounts because it doesn't take a lot. And we wanna condition each of these and get them real soft. So you can do it with either hand. <laughs> How do you clean your hands? Like if you get color of clay on your hands? Good question. So sometimes you are going to get a transfer of color onto your hands, especially if you're using like reds or purples. It's very natural with most craft products that it can transfer 
um, color to your hands. And the way I get rid of it is just to wipe my hands with baby wipes or even with straight paper towel uh, between colors. And then when I'm completely done with my project, I will wash my hands with soap and water. So here's what I'm gonna do with these is I'm just gonna kind of bundle these together, including my scrap. And I'm just kind of working these into each other because I'm um, not going for a real stripey look. I'm going for more of a, a marbled look. So I'm just kind of pushing from the outside in and moving the clay around in my hands and then pushing from a different perspective. Now, if you wanted this to be striped like this one, you would roll this out and then twist it. But what we're going for is kind of more of a modeled look. So I'm not doing the twisting, I'm just doing the rolling. And I'm just gonna keep rolling this until I think it's close to being long enough for my, um, for my rope. All right, I'm gonna show you real quick how to make it twisted. You just go like this, okay? If you want a twisted look, it's so easy. If you don't want a twisted look and you just want it to be kind of more marbled, you can leave it untwisted, but it's so easy to do either one. Okay, I'll bring my lid back in and check if I have enough clay. Yeah, I have plenty of clay to go around, okay? So when I'm doing a rope edge like this, I always start with a cut that's like an angle, like a 45 degree angle. And I will place this 45 degree, I'll place the tip of it up next to- Can you, can you move it back a little bit? Okay. This way? Yeah, yeah Okay, yeah. thank you. Thanks for telling me. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna start pushing this to that bottom edge of our decorative, decorative lid, okay? And I'm just using finger pressure to make it uh, stick. All right, now when I get back to the first edge, I wanna cut another angled cut the opposite way of the first one so that they fit together like a mitered corner. And then I'll just burnish this down. And you can totally mix that seam with your finger. Okay, now I'm just going back and making sure that it's stuck real well. Okay, and then what I want to do is once again, make sure that it fits my jar well. Because you can always move this rim out if it's interfering with how it seats on the jar. You can do that right now before you put it in the oven. Okay, so next we want to talk about finishing the top with how whatever you want to use for a little handle. And I brought some inspiration pieces here. Um, crystals are super, uh, you know, popular right now and easy to find. So if you want to use a crystal, I would use one that kind of stands up taller, you know, and makes like a nice like so actually makes a handle. Um, I've got some different colors. I also have a piece of, um, this is sort of like a piece of glass that would make a nice handle. I thought also a seashell might be kind of cool um, for a handle, especially if you had like a special shell that you've collected from the beach and you wanna make like a keepsake out of it. This is also a piece of like um, broken beach glass, which I thought would make kind of a cool handle on the top. So if you want to really make your handle sit on there nicely, what you need to do is make a little divot here for it. And I'm going to pick this piece of white crystal and I'm going to push down with the crystal and make a little footprint of where it's going to go after baking. Now you could totally bake the crystal in there, but it's never permanently going to bond with the clay. So what you want to do is just make your little footprint, your little seat, then take the crystal off and then you're gonna bake this lid with that little well. 
And then when it comes out of the oven, you're going to bake this in your home oven at 275. And you're going to go about 40 minutes because for Sculpey 3, we go 20 minutes per quarter inch of thickness. And we have, this is almost a half of an inch thick by the time I'm done with it. So you're going to go in your home oven 275 for 40 minutes. When it comes out, you're going to, you're going to use some glue, your favorite like instant dry glue or your favorite silicone glue to put that crystal in there permanently. Okay, now bake this uh, lid separate, bake it just like that. Don't bake it on your jar because if you get like a super good seal, um, the air inside the jar is gonna need somewhere to go. And so better safe than sorry, you can just bake the, bake the lid flat, okay? So are there any other questions about there are One about the lid? Yeah, there is. <laughs> okay. Um, if the rim isn't attached well to the lid, will it pull off during the baking process? It, it won't. I okay. I think you're talking about this rim mm -hmm. and this lid. Mm -hmm. Okay. It will not probably come off during baking, but it might come off later when you're using the lid. So I always just go back around and make sure that there's really good connection. And what I mean by good connection is I can't see any gaps. I can see no gaps between the rim and the lid. It's just, I can just tell by feel that they're, those are connecting really well. Now on this side, it's hanging down a little, which is fine, but I still don't see any gaps where I can see light between the rim and the lid. And so that's a great question. It's not gonna come off during baking, but it might come off during use. And so I always try to, you know, uh, gauge the quality of my products by how much they're gonna get used. And so I do wanna make sure that's really seated on there well so that it doesn't come off when I'm using it day to day. So I'm just gonna, is there any other questions about, no. the, about that lid? Okay, I'm gonna get some of this out of my way and we're gonna move on to the little decor of the lunar phases that I made for the front of this planter, okay? And so the front of the planter has um, just a little bit of, it's got that black stripe. So I'm just gonna break off another quarter bar of that. And I'm gonna get this nice and soft with my fingertips. Get some of my body heat moving through it so that it's nice and flexible and very smooth conditioned. And then I always start by rolling things into a ball. I don't know why. I think it gives my brain a break. <laughs> and then I'm going to kind of roll this into a long, thick log. And we're going for this shape here, this whole area here. So it makes sense to me to start with, with a, longer, a longer shape. And then I'm just gonna orient this in front of me like so and take my roller and I'm just gonna start rolling this flat, real, real flat. A Little bit this way, a little bit that way. And this can be real, real skinny. Get more going that way. You can stretch it a bit if that helps you get like thicker areas, thinner. Some people use dedicated pasta machines for clay work. That's perfectly fine too. This might be a good, good place to use a pasta machine, but you don't have to. You can do all this by hand. And when I'm grabbing it with my fingers, it's because I can see and feel like thicker areas that need a little more coaxing. So I'm just like pinching and pulling those. Okay, now it's time to start doing some checking to see if we're getting close on the size. So here's another can. I just want to make sure that my piece is longer than the can. I'll move this up so you can see. And it is, it's longer than the can. Now for the width of my design right here, I just looked in a drawer and I saw this old white ruler. <laughs> I think this ruler is as old as I am. And I used that as my gauge because it gave me like two straight sides to work from. And so I thought, well, that's really good. But if you don't have a ruler that's like the, the width you want it to be, you can always make yourself a paper template um, 
I think this ruler is about one and a half inches wide or one and three quarters. You can make yourself a paper template. You could totally just measure and mark, you know, with another ruler like you would fabric, um, whatever it takes just to make yourself a little guide for cutting this out really straight. All right, I've stretched that a lot more. I've got this stretched to, it's probably only about 1 16th of an inch thick. It's very, very thin. And I'm going to cut down both sides of this. Now, generally, um, because this is so thin, it would be quite breakable even after it's baked, but because it's gonna be mounted to this can and the can is gonna actually support the art, um, you can go thinner in an application like this um, because it has the support of the background. So I'm just lining my ruler up here and then I'm gonna cut down the sides like so with my little blade. And then pull my ruler and put it aside, get, get rid of these little scrappies on the edge. Okay, then I just wanna take a blade and pull this up and I'm gonna lay this on my can. And I want this to perfectly follow the curve of my can. So I'm gonna lay this right down and I'm just eyeballing it. Just trying to make sure it looks, looks like it's you know straight this way by holding the can. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really push this down so that it follows the curve of the can, okay? And then I'm gonna use my blade to trim this right inside those metal bands. Now, here's a, a tip for you. If you use glossy paint in this application, then the gloss paint adds a really nice adhesive grip to grabbing oven baked clay. I don't know why, but it sure does. And so if you used glossy paint back here, it's gonna act like an adhesive for your raw clay and you probably wouldn't even have to um, glue it on here. But this is a flat paint. So after it's baking, all we have to do is just gently remove this and then glue it back on permanently. So just a free tip there. All right, now I've got my black band in place and I'm gonna set this aside for just a little bit and I'm gonna work on my little moon, my little moon phases. So again, all we need is the tiniest bit. Um, I think I used, for the moon phases, about an eighth of a block of each color. So that's about that much clay of each color. Just cutting, blocks of clay are divided into four. And so I'm cutting each, a half out of each one of those. All right, so all I'm doing now is just getting these squishy and good to go. Fifteen minutes, we're going to get it done. We're going to do it. I know we are. I've been trying to give you a lot of good tips. <laughs> we're going to get it done. My boss, Jen, she's worried, but we're going to get this done. All right, I'm even conditioning two-handed now. Okay, so what we want to make is this little muddled, modeled um, moon phase. I'm gonna cut my black in half because I don't want it to be too dominant with that background. Okay, so next what I'm doing is sort of a partial marbling. And don't marble so much that you lose a color. Like see, I'm starting to lose the white. So I'm gonna go the other direction and bring that white back out. You don't wanna lose a color inside the ball, okay? But you just wanna squish it back and forth and kind of help those colors get mixing, just slightly. It's amazing what your hands, what your hands can do. So let's have a check. See how they're mixing? That looks really good. Okay, next we're going to flatten this out 
This time we're not gonna go nearly as flat as we did on that black band on the can. We're gonna go, we're gonna flatten to about one eighth inch thick. And look how pretty some of the colors are like blending here and blending there and partially blending, not completely blending. This side's a lot less blended, which you might like. This side's a lot more blended, which you might like, okay? And so that's about an eighth of an inch thick. And I've got these cute little circle cutters from Michaels. And what we need is a grand total of three of these. So first, pick the most exciting area that you like the most. And we're gonna call that one the full moon. And then pick a couple other areas that look different than that. And those will be our moon phases. Remove your excess clay. Remember which one you want for your full moon. Okay, then cut one in half. And when I cut these in half, I always cut across the colors. That's gonna be waxing and waning. Then we're gonna cut this one in half across the colors, but we're also gonna take, um, we're gonna take this and cut a little crescent out. And then we're gonna smooth this so it doesn't have that tight little corner there. We're gonna remove that corner with our fingertips. And these will be our waxing crescent and waning crescent. Just pinch these back out, okay? So we got all that done with just one circle cutter. I find that exciting when you can multi-purpose task with just one cutter. All right, we're gonna put our full moon right in the middle. And it is so cool because it totally just gonna grip onto that background. And then we'll put a half moon down here and a half moon up here. And then a crescent moon here. And a crescent moon up here. And I wanna show you just for comparison, like this, this sheet wasn't marbled nearly as much as this one. I got a lot more color blending with that one. You can keep going and do more marbling or do less marbling. It's totally up to you. You are in control of your design. Okay, this whole can, paper can and all goes right in the oven. And then if your design here feels a little loose, you can pop that off and glue it back on permanently with either a fast drying or silicone glue. All right, last project, and this one's gonna be the fastest. So I've got my pre-painted Altoid tin. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this scrap and we're also gonna take some more about the same amount of clay that we used on the moon phases. Just break those off, condition each one to soft, get in there with both hands. We're basically gonna do the same thing again as we did for the moon phases. And we've got this scrap that we rescued from that project. And we'll just put this on here too, and this on here too, and this on here. And again, I'm gonna break the black in half for good luck. <laughs> All right, so we got these great colors going. And I love for this project that some of our colors have glitter in them. We're using the pink glitter and the black glitter. And this whole thing is just has sort of a celestial galaxy type look and the glitter just really adds to that a lot. All right, I'm just working from the outside in. I'm using my fingers and a lot of pressure to help partially blend these, okay? Now, one more trick. We're gonna roll this into a ball. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add just a little silver leaf. And that's what's making all these glorious sparkles up here. So I've got some silver leaf, it comes in sheets. And I'm just gonna roll through it and pick some of that up. And it'll feel like you're getting too much cause maybe it's gonna feel like you're covering the whole ball, but we actually have to flatten this out. And that silver leaf is gonna really spread around. So let me show you what I mean. Next, we are going to make sure that silver's on there really nicely. And then we're gonna start flattening this out. 
with our roller. And as you flatten, that clip, the clay colors are really coming back through the silver. And you can put a lot of silver or a little silver, however you want your design to look. And you want to bring this down to about um, an eighth of an inch thick. So this one has a little and this one has a lot. Just depends how you want it to look. But I love all the colors that are like partially blended through there. It looks amazing. All right, open up your can and just line this up how you want it. And I really like those blended colors. So I'm going kind of way off center and I'm pushing this to the can. And I'm even gonna roll it just a bit because those raised Altoid letters on there kind of help hold the clay in place. Okay, then you just take your blade and trim around the edge, right around the edge of the, of the painted can, like so. And go around this side too. Now, if you wanted to, you could totally bend this around the full edge of the of the lid if you want, or I just like to kind of stop there. Now, let's go back and make sure it's seated on there really nice and flat. Use your roller if you want. And then take some time and go around the edge here with your finger and finger buff this rough edge so that it looks nice and finished. We don't want that to look like a cookie cutter edge. You want it to look like super finished and pretty. Bake that in your home oven. And that um, glossy paint that I used is gonna hold this right on. You shouldn't have to glue it back on, but if you wanna pop it off and then glue it on later, you can totally use um, a silicone glue or a rapid drying instant glue to bond it on permanently. So, hey, Chanel, if you can put me back on um, front facing, I'll thank everyone for coming. And um, I hope that you enjoyed and learned from our projects today. If you post to social media and you use our products, please include the hashtag, how do you Sculpey or hashtag Sculpey and Sculpey3. Also, please use hashtag make it with Michaels. And we will be looking for your inspirations um, through social media. So thank you so much. You can watch this video in a couple days when it goes live. Yes, Jen. Jen has a question. We have one more question. Okay, one more question. Does it make a difference if the oven's gas or electric? No, it does not make a difference if the oven is gas or electric, but you do want it to be a consistent temperature. Use an oven thermometer. Make sure you trust your oven that it is the temperature. It says it is. 275 is what we want for 20 minutes for, for this project. And just make sure it's consistent in heat. Doesn't matter if it's gas or electric. And so we have uh, what surfaces do you use to bake on? Okay, I bake on. Um, I have dedicated craft pans that I use in my in my studio and in my kitchen. That means I only use them for crafts, not for cooking. You can it can be metal, glass, um, anything that's oven proof at 275. If you have to double up on your cooking pans, just line them with baking parchment or aluminum foil. <laughs> okay, is that it? I think so. Good questions, people. Thank you for being here. And I hope to see you next month. Um, we're making bracelets in November. So look for our class on Michael's Creative Classroom.